transcribed starring Brian Van Levy as Steve Mitchell. sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment's going to wind up with my life depending on a handful of ashes. Good morning, Commissioner. You sent for me? Steve, I've just made an appointment for you to meet someone under the big clock at the railway station in Istanbul. A charming young lady? I should be so lucky. His name is Taven Drobo, a member of the Hungarian underground. He's going to point out someone to you, Steve, someone you're to follow. Ah, oh, the charming young lady? A foreign agent, a man known as Mr. Alexander. Okay, Commissioner, no charming young ladies. What's it all about? Two days ago, a diplomatic file was stolen from our embassy in Rome. The file contained a secret survey on Europe's defense potential. Any idea who might have taken it? None, but we know where the file is. Oh. The person who has that file is waiting at a small resort town in the Black Sea, some 50 miles from Istanbul. Waiting? For the agent, Mr. Alexander, to show up and pick up the file. We got the tip from the Hungarian underground that Alexander's on his way there now. And they put Drobo on his trail to keep him in sight until I arrived? Right. You ought to meet him at the railroad station in Istanbul. He put the finger on Alexander. It's vitally important we recover that file, Steve. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. The National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you will find Steve Mitchell on another dangerous assignment. Tomorrow and every weekday, Monday through Friday, over most NBC stations, Bob Hope brings you a new series of daytime radio programs. Yes, the same Bob Hope you've grown to know and love during the past 15 years now invades the field of daytime radio. And ladies... Bob's new show is just what the doctor ordered to chase away your blues and add to your day's enjoyment. So make it a date to join Bob Hope tomorrow and every weekday, Monday through Friday on NBC. And with Bob is his sidekick, Bill Goodwin. And gracing the program is a special lady guest editor. Now, this week's guest editor is Zsa Zsa Gabor. So remember, it's the new daytime Bob Hope show every day, Monday through Friday on NBC. I've got my assignment. Get over to Istanbul and contact a man named Tevin Drobo who's going to put the finger on a foreign agent for me. Then I'm supposed to follow that agent and he leads me to the person who stole a diplomatic file from our embassy in Rome. It's as simple as that. Only I've got a hunch it won't be. It never is. It's early Tuesday evening when my plane lands in Istanbul. I hustle right over to the railroad station, park myself under the big clock and wait for Drobo. Then I spot a little gent in the crowd, eyeing me. He's wearing a gray fedora, long black coat with a velvet collar. He's carrying a small suitcase and an odd-looking umbrella. He throws a quick glance around the waiting room, and then he comes over. He could be Drobo. Uh, pardon me. May I trouble you for a light? Sure. Uh, care for a cigar? Uh, no, thanks. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hey, <laughs> strong little rascal, isn't it? Oh, excuse me. Uh, you are waiting for someone? I'm expecting a friend. A charming young lady, perhaps, eh? No, a gentleman from Budapest. Oh, uh, if you can spare a moment, I have something to show you of great interest, my friend. Lead on. Uh, do not follow me now. Wait until I have left the station. <laughs> As he glides through the crowd and eases out the front entrance, I stroll out after him into the street and spot him as he turns into a darkened doorway. When I reach him, he opens up the umbrella, only it turns out to be a tripod. He sets the suitcase on top of it, opens it, and he's ready for business. Now, allow me to introduce myself. I'm called Crazy Julius, the Mad Macedonian. Wristwatches, jewelry, lighters, cameras, and at such low prices, no wonder they call me crazy, huh? Eh? Oh, brother. Take, for instance, this exquisite watch, for example. When I tell you the price, 
<laughs> Sorry, Dickless, you're going to laugh in my face. Oh, look, boss. Uh, Julius, crazy Julius, call me. Now, here, this beautiful camera. I promise you do not get hysterical when I tell you the price. It's a promise, and good night. Uh, wait! Get your claws off my lapel. You're bending my good conduct ribbon. Uh, perhaps you are in the market for a set of automobile tires. How about a set of false teeth? Of course, I got them. You try them on. You'll need them if you don't let go of me as of right now. Oh, please, don't be so unfriendly. I... Uh, uh, Excuse me. My lease has just expired. Mitchell? Yeah? I am Tevan Trobo. I happened to see you just as you were leaving the station. Who was that man? Just a peddler trying to make a fast sale. He gave me the come on back there at the station. I thought he was you. Mm, he seemed to be in a hurry. He spotted you coming towards us. Might have taken you for a plainclothes cop. Come, Mr. Mitchell. We had better get to the station. Oh, you're a drobo, huh? Here. These papers will identify me. Yeah. Okay, drobo. Where's our boy, Alexander? At the station coffee counter. Two of you just get in? Yes, a few minutes ago. A good thing I saw you when I did. Yeah, we might have missed connections on account of that peddler. Over this way. You said Alexander was at the coffee counter, drobo, huh? Yes, he was standing... No one there now. He's gone. Come on, let's get back outside. Any sign of him, Drobo? No. No, I don't see... Wait, yes. There he is, getting into that taxi. Okay, let's stay with him. We trail Alexander to a fashionable hotel. He gets room 305. I get room 312 at the end of the corridor. I leave my door open a crack and keep my eye on 305. Pretty soon, Alexander steps out into the hall, and then I hear a phone ringing. He steps back into his room, closes the door. I hurry down the corridor, stop just outside his room. Yes? Yes. What is that you say? I see. Very well, I will take care of this matter myself. I hear him slam down the receiver, and then his footsteps hurry toward the door. I can't get to my room in time, so I take three fast steps and ring for the elevator. Good evening. Oh, hello. I, I just rang for it. Oh, good. Beautiful evening out, huh? Shame to stay cooped up in one's room. Yeah, same idea occurred to me. Thought I'd take a little walk before hitting the sack. Hitting the sack? American, aren't you? That's right. You sound like USA yourself. Uh, not really. Although I spent many, many years in the States, I was raised there. Oh, really? Yeah, in New York City. 60th Street, just off Broadway. Oh, sure. Not far from Columbus Circle. Yeah, in Central Park. Had a lot of fun there as a kid. Later, we moved out to California. Los Angeles. <laughs> Correction. Los Angeles. Oh? Huh? Yeah, soft G. It's official now, so I heard. Chamber of Commerce took a voting or something. Uh, well, let's have a drink sometime, huh? Sure. Be good to talk over the good old USA. Well, good night. Good night. I see that met a friend. Yeah, he almost caught me listening at his door, Drobo. He just got a phone call. Oh, did you hear what he... No, I couldn't get any of the conversation. It might have been the tip-off, though. Hey, he just eased out the side door. Come on. We trail Alexander for several blocks. Then as we ease around the corner into a narrow, crooked street, he's suddenly nowhere in sight. Robo and I turn on the gas. He must have turned into one of those houses along here. Yeah. Which one? He couldn't have gone very far. We're only... Hey, what was that? Over there, Mr. Mitchell. That gate has just closed shut. Yeah. He probably ducked in here. Looks like a courtyard. Careful, Mr. Mitchell. You stay parked right here. I'm going in. <laughs> I then up the steps to the first floor. I slip along the balcony overlooking the courtyard below. The dog's howl is the only sign of life around. I move up the stairs again, and then when I reach the second floor balcony, Alexander is waiting for me. I dive at his knees, and the slug whips past me. The gun goes off again close to my ear. I sink it right into his middle. He bounces away, but comes right back. This time, swinging a chair, I duck under. He staggers past me and slams into the rail. It doesn't hold. Uh, 
Are you all right, Mitchell? Yeah. What about Alexander? He's dead. Dead? Well, that does it, Drobo. There goes our one lead. One man who could have led us to the person with the missing file. Maybe there's something in his pocket. I'll have a look. What are we going to do now, Mr. Mitchell? I don't know. Here is identification papers. Train ticket to the village reservation at the inn. Pity he will not be able to keep his rendezvous. Wait a minute. Why not? Why shouldn't he keep his rendezvous? Huh? Mr. Alexander is going to show up at the inn after all, Drobo. But I don't understand. Meet the new Mr. Alexander. Me. Steve Mitchell will continue his dangerous assignment in just a moment. Having a tough time saving money these days? Well, comes the day before payday and you just can't figure out where the money's gone? Well, then listen. There's a good cure for that trouble. Save before you've got a chance to spend. Yes, save automatically by purchasing United States defense bonds through the payroll savings plan where you work or the bond a month plan where you bank. Now, on the payroll savings plan, you can save as little or as much as you like. Yes, your employer automatically saves it for you each week. And then, as soon as there's enough, you receive your bond. It's as simple and painless as that. The bond a month plan at the bank works the same way. Each month, you automatically buy a bond, whatever denomination you choose. Now, one of these plans will fit your budget. And remember, today, defense bonds offer you more interest a quicker return on your money. Yes, they're now even better. So invest more in defense bonds. Now, back to Dangerous Assignment and Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. dead man's place, Mitchell? Why not? Alexander could pass as an American any time. I've got his papers, and this looks like my best chance of getting that stolen file back. How far is it to the village where the inn is? It is up the coast of the Black Sea. A train leaves here in the morning and passes through the village around noon. I can't wait for that. I've got to get to the inn as soon as possible before anyone has a chance to find out that the real Alexander's dead. I'll have to see about a car. Speaking of a car. Yeah, that looks like the local law. I guess somebody reported the shots. Good. We'll need their cooperation. I show my credentials to the police officer and ask him to keep Alexander's death hushed up for the present. He arranges for a car and Drobo and I head for the inn. We arrive about 8 a.m. The morning is chilly and gray. Nobody seems to be up but the host. And as he leads us up the stairs, we get the idea that he wishes he wasn't. <sighs> Here you are, gentlemen. Your room. The best in the house. The only one with a fireplace. And such a magnificent view of the coast. Are we keeping you up? No, not for long. Business must be a little off, huh? Oh, so, so. Five guests. Just enough. Perhaps you could tell us who they are so that we could uh, become acquainted sooner. Oh, of course, of course. Nice English couple whose name they is uh, Pemberton. Uh, Signor Alfredo Montic from Rome. Oh, a man named Coutrine, and a young lady, Niva Bratov. All very nice people. All very good sleepers. Except one. Which one? The young lady. Yeah, you see out the window? Down there on the beach. In the bedding suit. Yeah. Well, well. Will there be anything else? No. Night. 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 Thank you. Well, Mitchell? This Montic from Rome sounds kind of interesting. The file was stolen from our embassy there. What will be your first step? Oh, just circulate around among the guests and introduce myself as Mr. Alexander. See what happens. And as long as the girl seems to be the only one up, I think I'll ankle down to the beach and start with her. Hello. Oh, good morning. Pretty cold morning for a swim, isn't it? Oh, it's quite invigorating. And here's your towel. Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, yes, I find these morning swims very delightful. A good conditioner keeps me in excellent shape. Well, it's in excellent shape to keep. Oh, thank you. You see, I'm a dancer, and condition is most important to me. 
Are you staying here at the inn also? Yeah, I just arrived this morning. Oh, I'm Niva Brato. My name is Alexander. Oh? Ah, here you are, my dear. Oh, oh Mr. Coutrine. And Mr. Alexander, our new arrival. Why, yeah. Uh, this is Mr. Coutrine, another guest at the inn. Oh, are yeah. you? Splendid, splendid. And delighted to make your acquaintance, sir. You're up earlier than usual this morning, Mr. Coutrine. Uh, of course. I see that you have forgotten, my dear. Forgotten? You are to have breakfast with me. Oh, yes. And that is what I came down to tell you. They are serving now. Very well. Perhaps I shall see you later, Mr. Alexander. Yeah, sure, Miss Brato. <laughs> Drobo is still waiting for me in the room. We go downstairs to the dining room and look over the lot. The English couple are sitting at a table near the window watching the birds and a tree outside. The girl and Coutrine are at a corner table, but the other guest, Montique, is nowhere in sight. You say Coutrine addressed you as Mr. Alexander even before you were introduced? That's right, Drobo. Of course, our sleepy innkeeper could have mentioned the name to him. Or else he is the one with the file and was expecting Mr. Alexander's arrival. Yeah, could be as soon as he heard I was here, he hustled down to the beach only to find the girl there. Naturally, he could not say anything to you in her presence. Of course, it could be just the other way around, too. The girl? Yeah. After I told her my name was Alexander, I think she started to say something. But Katrina interrupted with his arrival. So, either of them could be the one. But the question is, which? And there's still Montague. I wonder where he is. Perhaps he's a late sleeper. Huh? What now? Only one thing we can do. Go back to the room and wait for somebody to make a move. Quarter after 11. I don't like it, Drobo. We've been sitting up here ever since breakfast and nobody's made a move to contact me. Mitchell, look. Out the window. Huh? Hey, Neva walking along the road that leads to the beach. But she's not going for a swim. He's fully dressed. That road also leads towards the village, doesn't it? I believe so. Wait, there is Coutrine down there on the terrace. Mm, wandering off in the other direction, huh? Well, I'm not going to wait any longer. What are you going to do? Maybe I'm supposed to go to the one who's got the file instead of waiting for him or her to come to me. I might as well start with Montique. According to the register, he's got the room at the end of the hall. What will you say to him? I'll introduce myself and see if the name registers. If so, I'll tell him somebody's after me that I couldn't wait for him to come to me. Huh. He's a pretty sound sleeper. He's taken a powder. Hey, unlocked. Richard, hmm? they're on the floor. Yeah. Here, I'll turn them over. between the eyes. Funny. Nobody heard the shot. The killer must have used the silencer. Is there anything in his pockets to identify him? Yeah. It's Montego, all right. Here's a stub of a train ticket. Oh. Okay, I guess we can assume that Montique's the one who had the file. Then who killed him and why? A partner, maybe. Somebody who wanted to make a better deal for the file. It must be either Coutrine or the girl. Yeah, and they both took off a couple of minutes ago in opposite directions. Look, you take the girl. I'll take Coutrine. Come on. Drobo goes in one direction. I go in the other. I pound along the road Coutrine took a few minutes before. Then I round a bend and spot him in front of me. He's kneeling beside a tree as if hiding something. I ease up behind him, but a twig cracks under my foot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello, Coutrine. Oh. Oh, Mr. Alexander. Yeah. Mr. Alexander. You startled me. What do you... Wait a minute. A little bird? Yes, yes. Apparently he fell out of the nest. I noticed him as I was walking by. He's a cute little fellow, huh? Oh, great. He's something magic. Skip it. What are you grinning at? Well, I, I must say you present quite a picture. <laughs> Glaring at me suspiciously with a dark streak across your forehead. Dark streak? Here, would you care to borrow my handkerchief? No, thanks. I've got one. I... Looks like soot. Where could I? You see? You see, you had some on your hand. You must have rubbed it across your forehead. Yeah, but how could I get soot on my hand? Hey, wait a minute. Hold everything. What? What's the matter? I think this whole deal just slid into place. Yeah. 
I head back to the inn in Montique's room. Sure enough, there's a streak of soot on his sleeve. I go into my own room. The fireplace hearth is swept clean, too clean. I poke around in the ashes and charcoal, brush them aside. Then I spot what I'm looking for. A dark stain on the bricks. A blood stain, Mitchell. What? Please don't move. Well, hello, Drobo. From the look of that silencer on your gun, I'd say it was the one that you used to kill Montique. Quite right. Sure. Montique came to our room this morning to contact Mr. Alexander while I was down on the beach talking to the girl. You shot him and took the file. He fell against the fireplace here. You carried him back to his own room, but there was a streak of soot on his sleeve, which rubbed off on me when I turned him over. So that's how you know. Yeah. I remembered the innkeeper saying that ours was the only room with a fireplace. I was packing for the noon train when I saw you return. Fortunate for me that I did. So all this time you've just been playing along until you found out who had it, huh? Exactly. Now stand up and turn around slowly. Okay. How's it? <coughs> Sorry. Thanks for the gun. It'll come in handy as evidence. Also, thanks for the file. Sort of a dirty trick, throwing ashes in your eyes like that. You see, I still had a handful from uncovering the blood stain in the fireplace, so I figured one good streak in the face deserves another. Matter of fact, I guess you might say that all through the deal, my luck's been running in streaks. star, Brian Donlevy, will return in just a moment. Tuesday night is comedy night on the NBC radio network. Yes, here you'll find such laugh-packed programs as the Red Skelton Show, the Dean Martin and Jerry, Jerry Lewis Show, and Fibber McGee and Molly, each with more than its share of comedy material for you. Yes, Dean and Jerry, those madcap comedy characters, provide 30 zany minutes of mirth and madness. And everyone loves Red Skelton, the clown of clowns, as he portrays such characters as Junior, the mean little kid, Willie Lump Lump, and Cauliflower McPug. Bill McGee and Molly are another pair of top comedians on your Tuesday night entertainment calendar, so just set your dial to the NBC spot, and you'll be whisked to 79 Wistful Vista, where Fibber and Molly are sure to find more comedy situations to tickle your funny bone and keep you chuckling for 30 short minutes. Yes, make NBC your comedy headquarters every Tuesday night with these three great shows. Fibber McGee and Molly, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, and Red Skelton. Remember, they're all yours for the listening on the NBC Radio Network. Next week, Germany. And I arrange to get run over by a truck. That will be Steve Mitchell's dangerous assignment next week. Included in tonight's cast were Paul Fries, Harry Bartell, Herb Ellis, Jeannie Bates, and Tony Barrett. This is John Storm speaking. <laughs> Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell with Herb Butterfield as the commissioner, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian John Doe, and is directed by Bill Carn. Be with us again next week at the same time when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another transcribed dangerous assignment. Always listen for the familiar three NBC chimes. They're your invitation to fine radio entertainment. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>